Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Here with David Thrussell. Here we are outside the Ring of Steel once again, <laughs> on in glorious uh, undisclosed location, undisclosed in, location in rural Victoria, and perhaps, um, perhaps. <laughs> and um, and what's the date today, David? Um, the eighteenth. The eighteenth of January. January. The eighteenth of January. Yes. Twenty twenty one, and uh, as we all see. Um, that uh, 2021 it. seems to be like an even more nightmarish version of 2020. <laughs> so stick Who around. I thought it was possible. That's right. We're going to talk yeah. today. So stick around. Okay. So here we are with David Thrussell. Um, we're going to talk about, I guess, um, you know, what's going on with the COVID crisis. And I guess we're at the end of the era of Trump because in two days, apparently Joe Biden is being inaugurated as president, unless Apparently. unless there's some strange event. Hard to believe. That we hear rumours of, but that's probably highly <laughs> as, unlikely. As you know, there's all sorts of rumours swirling around. People say, well, this I'm hearing a lot of this, that, you know, at least in a week, <clears throat> we'll have some definitive answers exactly, about yes. what's going on. But perhaps we won't, mm -hmm. you know, because I feel like all of these narratives have just, they've just become sort of endless. They never really finish, you know, the... You know, as we know, with the COVID nonsense, it was two weeks to flatten the curve. Well, yes. now almost a year later, that, that curve obviously is not quite flat enough. I know, I know. know. And you've always been on the, on the fence with Trump. And I, I've, I've, I've been quite supportive of Trump. But with seeing the kind of Trump era come to an end, it, it, it's, one can't help but feel... I mean, unless Perhaps. there is some miracle this Perhaps. week. Unless Who there's knows? a miracle this week. Seriously, but it does, leave, it does leave something of a sour taste in the sense that like, he created so much chaos in a way which he's now just going to leave everybody in. I mean, he's going to ride off into his billions, basically. You know what I mean? So, as, as you know, and look, I don't have a definitive no, answer on no. this at all. Neither do I. I. Don't. Because there's, there's, there's so many countercurrents and there's evidence yep. for so many different points yep. of view. I honestly don't exactly know. Yes. One of the schools of thought, as you know, mm. and this is a particularly dark school of thought, and I've, in some ways I've wanted to stay away from it because it's so dark, mm. is that Trump is this deliberate agent of chaos and... And even if he isn't, I actually, my personal view is I don't think he is personally in the of the chaos. Yes. But there is a it level... It could be an unconscious one too. Yeah. Absolutely. He just might want to do it and, and then the powers that be think, well, that will be good for it. Because all the nationalists and all the patriots and stuff, they've all come out and identified themselves. Many of them went to the Capitol building and they're clearly all going to be arrested as domestic terrorists, or at least a lot of them. You know, based Alaska, he was like one of these alt-right kind of guys. I mean, I was never a fan of his work, but he's been arrested apparently. Okay, I didn't as know. a terrorist or something. Okay, yes. This is where we're at. You know? This this is potentially where we are. Yep. Is that there is this higher level going on here yep. of um, what I have for a long time I've called it a cold theatre. Yes, you know, and that's been an element in our politics, and it's yep. been an element in our elections for a long time. I yep. mean, before the 2016 election, I had given up on paying any attention to U.S. elections because, that, to me, they looked exactly like a cult theatre. You yep. know, you had a you had a a good cop and a bad cop yep. and you know this whole yes, thing was manipulated yes. to to uh, well up the public energy yes. to, to manipulate the public energy and channel it into these directions i mean i remember when obama was elected mm. there was you know what you could call as quite good public energy against war the endless wars and so yep. forth and so on channeled into this guy who at the time even then i knew he would be worse than Bush. And he was. In this character. Yeah, you know. he was Bush. But He drone-bombed everybody. Yeah, of course. But this is what I'm talking about. It's this occult theatre that, that manipulates yep. the public energy in whatever direction it wants. And did you notice you know? the way that in the invasion of the Capitol building, there was that guy with the horns like, you know, there's actual symbols of Baal and stuff that, you know, and they were kind of Egyptian, So uh, you know. When you think of the, your typical Trump, uh, Trump demographic, yeah. I don't think a guy with horns who looks like he's going to the Mardi Gras <laughs> exactly. is precisely the first thing you would yes. think of when you think of a Trump I don't demographic. Think, it, it, because you're accusing Trump of staging a coup, which is, of course, what they have done. You know, I mean, the coup was the election of, of Joe Biden, the fraudulent election, right? Sure. But now they're accusing Trump of an attempted counter coup where he's got some guy with horns leading it. It's ridiculous. Uh, there are, That's a ridiculous. Look, a friend right? of mine, as a friend of mine in the states, because he's been impeached it. again. I mean, he obviously hasn't been impeached ever, but like, there's an impeachment attempt. There's a second one, sure. and it won't take place until after <laughs> he's left office. With the, with the uh, GOP. Wheels within wheels, I know. as a friend of mine says. I mean, imagine, this looks so chaotic from what we can see via yeah. the media, right? It looks extraordinarily chaotic. Yep. Try and imagine what might be going on behind the scenes. Yes, yes. You know, if this is what we're seeing in the public, because normally the public gets a very sanitised version of things yep. and a very manipulated version of things. It okay? does, yeah, yeah. So if we're seeing in the public eye pure chaos, which is difficult to, to pass what exactly is going on, mm. I can't imagine what's going on behind the scenes. 
No, I know. And you I hear know. all sorts of rumours. Yeah. As I well, obviously, saying, there's the queue rumour, and obviously, I mean, it, it's always been a tempting. I mean, when you say queue, I mean, I don't just mean the queue post or, or the queue anon or whatever you call that. Or I mean the whole general idea that there's going to be some flip of the election, and, and obviously, it, it's always been coming, and then. You know, of course, the last hope is apparently this week, you know. They've, they've, and, but it is strange. There's a, there's a whole bunch of troops that are on the street. Now, they're, they're there supposedly to protect um, Biden. Maybe they're there to arrest him, though. I mean, who the hell knows? But I've got a feeling they're there to protect him, you know? Yeah, all, all, all options are on the table, yeah, I think. Yeah, it is so, right now, yeah. I mean, I, I think, well, unfortunately, what we've really seen mm. mostly is victories for the deep state mostly i know? think so because it's and all about dividing in america and america couldn't be more divided and 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 you got to you got to blame the dems for that sure but yeah. you also got to blame trump in a way because america could not be more divided right now and in a sense if you want to um balkanize america if you want to break it up into little pieces the situation is perfect for that i would I, I, i'm not really disputing what you're saying mm. what, what i would say if you really want to apportion blame mm. the first uh, entity on the list that I would apportion blame to would be the corporate media. Actually, yes, absolutely. I think they are the most guilty mm. of dividing society. In fact, mm. I think that that is their primary purpose. The US that media. Is their, that is their bread and butter. We know who owns that. It's know? terrible. And they, do it, they do it all the time and they do it in really banal ways and they do it in really major ways. It is their bread and butter is to divide the population. And I did think it was strange. I mean, I mean, obviously, all kinds of presidents um, Ameri all American presidents are, are, are bend over backwards for Israel, but uh, Trump particularly bent over backwards. I mean, he bent over backwards more than Obama. I mean, Obama gave money to Iran and was attempting, I thought, to achieve some kind of detente, you know. And that was the one thing where he seemed to go off script a bit when he gave money to Iran. But see, that seemed to upset a lot of people. But, like, uh, Trump just did everything that Iran... Uh, he did everything Israel wanted except start the war with Iran. Which is obviously Biden's job, you know, which I think is you coming. You assume so. You, uh, there's definitely yeah. going to be a war with Iran. Yeah. And obviously the allies of Iran are, are Russia and China. So, so does that mean is that whatever World criticisms War you may have of, of, the, of the Trump era, mm. I guess <clears throat> it's, it's beyond dispute, really, and this is why it's ignored, yep. is that we didn't see any new major wars launched. Yeah, no, that was interesting. You know? yeah. I, that's that one that thing is, I really liked about him. You know? That is very, very interesting. Good on you, Mr. Trump. And, and it, you know, if we do enter the Biden era, Yes. It's difficult to see that continuing, isn't it? No, I you know? agree. And I mean, it's very hard for me to talk about Trump in this way, because really, I'm a one-eyed Trump supporter in many ways. So for me to talk critically of him, it's just been, it's kind of very soul-searching to me. Or, you know, I, 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 you know, I feel like that guy in you know, that video when uh, when Trump won and there was like the Hillary Clinton supporter who went, no, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm not that bad. But like, well, you know, I feel like, you know, very dejected, you know, at the we, moment. I, I, I don't know how this is going to play out. Yeah. I, I'm putting it right there on the table. Yeah. I don't know how this is going we'll to play out. We'll save that for our next video. Okay. Mm. Uh, I think there are, there is a multitude of possibilities. Yes. I cannot pass which one will will go forward, you yeah. know. Um, I mean, I, I think there's another possibility. I mean, it may descend into complete chaos. Yes. I think there's a large push yep. by a, 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 an alliance of forces to make yep. that happen. I there do are suspect other possibilities. There are other something possibilities. Something is definitely going to happen this week. Well, I mean, the other thing is, is there could be some kind of violent action from a false flag who they blame on Trump supporters. Of course. And then they say, all right, now we have to arrest them all. Of you course. know what I mean? Under of the bus. Of course. I can this smell that a mile off. This will all yep. be happening in the background, yep. Yep. I suspect. I agree. I, agree. I also suspect that there's another possibility is that in that Trump, if Trump does actually leave office, and mm. honestly, I have no idea if that's going to happen or not, mm. but if that does happen, I can see also him becoming a sort of Emmanuel Goldstein kind of character. Yes, that's you know, true. Used yep. as a lightning rod. Yeah, a whipping uh, boy. A whipping boy and a lightning rod for, yep. dis uh, for uh, descent and, and blow forth. You know, also, sort of I mean, character. the other possibility is, is, he, is he leads some kind of resistance from Trump Tower or from Mar-a-Lago where he has his base. Um, he, he has a wealthy guy and he has a lot of wealthy friends still. I imagine he'll be able to set up a new kind of Twitter or a new kind of service. Obviously, they took Parler offline this week. You heard about that. Yes, I did. You know, um, uh, so uh, look, I think that's enough for part one. Um, we're going to pause it there. Um, so we're going to pause part one. We'll be back with part two in a minute. We're going to talk about censorship and COVID crisis here on the Report from Tiger Mountain with David Russell. Thanks. <laughs>